Welcome back to Bob's house. I'm gonna work on this 1946 Mercury again. Time to clay bar it. It's a really cool, cool day. It definitely feels like fall finally. A little breezy, so I'm hoping the mic's not picking that up. But let's get busy on this. I'm excited to show you what a clay bar can do for this paint. So since the Mercury has been out for a really long time outdoors, I'm taking extra steps just to make sure that all the stuff that is on the top. I mean, if you run your hand along this, you can just feel all of the really rough stuff that's kind of collected on here through the years, even though I've washed it really well. It's uh, it's not smooth at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clay bar, which I'll take out of the package in just a second here, and we're going to use this Mother's California Gold detailing. I'll put that down in the description along with the clay barn where you can get yours and we're going to have lots of towels handy just to get it off but i'll show you how to do it but first this important tip when it comes to this clay bar it's very very important to keep anything off of it that shouldn't be like sand and all kinds of yucky stuff, thick dirt, all that stuff, and that's why we already washed it really well. You're going to take it, make it pliable. If for some reason as you're working outside, uh, maybe in a shop it's not as bad, but you know, you never know what you've got on the floor of your shop either after working a lot of stuff, you know, you're drilling on things, you're sanding things, all these different things that the clay bar will pick up and then it'll get in this and then you'll end up scratching your paint up. So if by some chance you end up making the, the mistake of losing grip of this clay bar and it falls on the ground, especially if there's a lot of dirt and sand like there is here, just toss it, get a new one. Otherwise you chance, even if you think you've gotten all the stuff off the clay bar, there's a good chance there's still stuff in there that could scratch up your paint. They said that there was chances of rain today. It looks like there's pretty good chances. It's really starting to come down just a little bit here and there. Some drops are getting on the screen. Two important things. You're gonna only work on surfaces that are more flat, not on things that are on the side. Cause I'm gonna be spraying this stuff and then we're gonna be working on stuff, keeping it nice and flat. And the rest of it, I'm gonna be using the rubbing compound. Another thing I like to do is get this nice and pliable and soft by the heat of my hands. And then it makes it not be so rigid when you're using it on the paint. So it'll kind of go with more of you know, like a bended area like this is. It's still flat. I just wouldn't do it like on the side sides. You're gonna take your detailer. You're gonna spray a decent amount after you shook it a little. Make sure it's nice and wet where you're going to be working, like really, really wet so that this just glides across it as you're rubbing it around. And you're literally going to stay only on the wet stuff. Ooh, and you're just going to rub it around until it feels nice and smooth underneath. You'll see how it starts kind of rough a little, but then it, eventually it just gets really nice and smooth in that area and you won't feel the gritties under there. It'll just feel like a nice smooth paint. If it starts to feel like it's dragging, spray a little bit more, especially on these surfaces since it's kind of rolling off a little bit. And you just keep running it around, keep it wet. And then when you're all done with that, when you feel like it's nice and smooth, you're just gonna rub this off. God, this, must, this stuff smells so good. It smells like uh, cinnamon bears or something. It's probably not gonna dry as fast because it's pretty damp out today. Back in a little bit, you may hear, and you may have already heard the raindrops hitting the metal top here. All right, we're gonna see if you can tell a difference. I think the, I think the phone will pick it up. Now through here, where I did it, I can just barely feel a little bit of grittiness. I can always go through there again or just wait for the compound. You come over here, can you hear that difference of the scratchiness? I mean, as far as it's being rough, and then over here, it's like so smooth 
really took a lot of those impurities off the paint that the soap and the water couldn't get. So I'm gonna do some areas up here, kind of show you what's going on as far as getting it smooth again. So nice and easy. It's all these extra things though that you do for your older vehicles, these classics, Model A's, whatever it is that you're driving that will make the world a difference in the paint and keeping it beautiful, getting it ready for uh, polishing it and making it super shiny and have that paint come back again. And you really want to keep that pad as flat as possible. So I usually just kind of get one part with my thumb under it just so I can hang on to it and then the rest of it I press on the top to keep it flat against the paint. So this isn't what gets it shiny, but it sets it up for getting really shiny. Yeah, nice and smooth. You can definitely tell the difference. Okay, you guys, listen to this. A lot quieter on the right side, huh? And just remember, you don't have to do this all in one day. Although if you're gonna do the clay barring on just all the flat surfaces and your vehicle doesn't have a ton of flat surfaces, you could probably get clay barring done in, in a day easily or less. So, don't feel like you have to do the entire car all in one day. Take section at a time, make it more doable, especially if your schedule is busy. So now I've got this whole panel up here done. So I'm gonna give you an idea of what the compound will do for it now. As most of you know, we love the McGuire's Ultimate Compound. So that's what I'm gonna do next, just to kind of give you an idea of what this is gonna look like after I'm done clay barring and start compounding the whole vehicle. So remember, you're gonna give it a good shake, get it all mixed up really, really well. All right, and I'm not gonna use my buffing machine today, polishing machine, whatever you wanna call it. So we're just gonna sputter some right there. <laughs> See if that's enough, although once my cloth starts getting to it, um, I'll probably have to put a little bit more. Okay, you're just gonna take it, rub it around. And of course, I do need to put more because it's sucking it right up my towel. It's too, too new of a towel, so I gotta get a little bit more on here. There we go. Let's get it in there, work it around in an area. I never like to go too big. And you can just work in an area that's nice and workable. You probably hear that rain coming down more. I won't be working on this too much today. It's probably going to be pouring here pretty quick. Okay. You always want to keep it going. Don't let it get dry. Wipe it off before it gets dry completely. Go around until it just feels really nice and smooth everywhere. Let's see how that goes. Pretty nice. 
hurry up and get my axe straight here. Start rubbing it off of there. It was pretty smooth. Oh my gosh, I can definitely tell a huge difference when I look to the side. And I think you can see it a little from this angle, but gosh, from the side, it's even more magnificent. So I'm gonna get some more area through here, right beneath it. I always like to set my bottles on a towel. <laughs> Keep this paint protected as much as I can everywhere. This is old paint, we gotta take good care of it. I mean, it's amazing how long it's lasted through the years. Kinda go back and forth in swirls. And go one way, make sure you're getting through all the areas equally, as equal as possible. And there's no reason, oh, I just threw some thunder. <laughs> why? Anyways, there's no reason why you can't do just like a hood one day, a fender another day, until the whole thing's done. And then give it a good polishing and seal it all in. All right, that ought to be really good. Get all that off of there and turn it over. I'm gonna cut that tag off. I haven't had a chance to cut the tags off yet. There we go. I mean, so far, I think you can tell that's a huge, huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Sound on or off? On. All right, we're going to get the rest Sorry. of this area and I'll show you what it I'm looks just like. Just walking into your shot over here. Sorry. Hey there, Paul. There's Bob. Hey, hey, good afternoon, everybody. What do we got? They're checking out our masterpiece here. What do we got here? They're doing a little oh, yeah. compound to give them an idea what it's going to look like now that we did the. Uh, Mr. Spot. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. We're going to some fast stuff now. Okay, that is quite a bit of difference. I wish the lighting was better out here, but you can definitely see the shine coming through now. Look at that, you can really tell a difference there. Wow. It's really coming down now. Okay, you guys, it is getting crazy weather. I am going to continue to work on the mercury today. I'm going to finish clay barring all the flat surfaces, which there aren't too many, just between the, uh, <laughs> between the top of the car and uh, the fenders, as far as the tops of the fenders and the top of the hood. And then next time, I am going to bring my uh, polishing machine, a little hand palm job, and I am going to make the rest of the car look like that. It's very exciting. Every time I see smooth, shiny paint like that, it just makes me so happy. So I'm going to get going because it is getting harder and harder at the side of my legs getting very wet right now. <laughs> guys take care god bless stay safe and well and i will see you next time when we have this car getting super shiny